Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today I want to cover games that have been improved in terms of visuals, content or performance for the Oculus Quest 2 because if you've got your Oculus Quest 2 you want to know what games can you play that are the best way to play on your new system. So there are loads of games here, some have had some small tweaks, some have had some massive tweaks and if you're interested there is an enhanced Quest 2 pack available on the Oculus Quest store as well, so you can get a ton of these games, I think it's around five of these games, for a discounted price. Because with the Oculus Quest 2 rocking the XR2 chip, there's some more headroom to squeeze some more juice out of it, so it can have nicer textures, higher resolution, and some of these games are also going to support 90 hertz, 90 frames a second, once that's been enabled. And if you don't know, you can enable it now with a nice cheeky little hack, which is in one of my other videos, which I'll put in a card up here. So, starting off, the first game on this list is Apex Construct. This game was a launch title on the Oculus Quest 1, and it was a great game for when the Quest launched. But of course, developers learn more tricks to improve the games, bringing bigger, more lavish improvements. That's exactly what Fast Travel Games, a dev studio who I do actually really like, have done. This action title that is well known for its burn arrow mechanic with a pop-up shield built in has got a Quest 2 enhanced update. This update includes a resolution boost for more clarity on the high resolution resolution screen. They've removed the foveated rendering from around the edge of the screen as well, so no more pixelated edges as you're exploring this colourful world. There's more particle effects such as sparks when you're hitting the robot enemies with your bow. The non-playable characters have ragdoll effects now as well, which is something I am a fan of. And there are more audio effects for your interactions around the world. This update and game is available right now on the Oculus Quest 2, and if you own the game already, perhaps you can dive back in again. Next is a game that seriously needed some graphical improvements, and this one has had a ton. It's Arizona Sunshine. This is a great virtual reality zombie game that can be played cooperatively, but an expensive one at $29.99 for an old port. And the port came out looking like a game from the N64 era. The community were not happy. But looking past that, I've always thought the game is still a great game, and it plays well on the standalone device. And now with the Oculus Quest 2 out, it's got a nice enhancement boost. So we now have HD zombies that are more detailed, such as they have scarring on the neck or wrinkles. The world is now more abundant with foliage such as weeds and plants around. There's blood spatters on the walls and floors. Glass can now be smashed in some areas as well. Sniper scopes are back. You can now look down a scope to take off zombies heads from a distance instead of using that terrible iron sight. There are also more detailed textures in game, new light maps which is an improvement that's available on the Quest 1 also so you can see much more shiny, detailed, reflective surfaces. The game is cross-play for Quest 1 as well, so those that were worried about that, you can still play cooperatively on both systems. So maybe it's time to dive back in and try and survive the zombie apocalypse. Just don't fear the mines. A creative puzzle and now one that's set in the future, and we're talking about Gravity Labs. So this game has had a graphical update for the Quest 2, and one to make the magpies happy. This game gets increasingly difficult pretty fast as well. It's a puzzle that gives you all the tools you need in order to complete the level, but you can complete it any way you see fit. So you can get really creative, which is both liberating and frustrating, as you only have yourself to blame when things are not working out. So you're in a space station and have to complete experiments which consist of you getting balls from point A to point B. The Quest 2 update includes reduced foveated rendering, increased resolution, and more reflective shiny textures to give you the feeling that you're in a high-tech lab, rather than the matte-like grey they had previously. Next, for the duelist within you, where you face off in one-on-one -on -one battles against opponents from all over the world, it's Iron Lights. So in this game, you will face off against bots or people online to test your skills, but this game is definitely an easy to learn, hard to master kind of style, which leads to some addictive gameplay. You have different classes, which have different play styles to suit how you like to play a game. More agility or heavy swinging power, that is up to you. This game's had a huge resolution boost with more than twice the pixels of the original game and the result is the text and model edges look incredibly crisp and clear and sharp. The dev is willing to bet it's the highest resolution game on the Oculus Quest 2 at launch, which I have to agree, it's pretty sharp. So if you're a resolution junkie, this one is for you. There's shader improvements as well, most noticeably on the hands. There are also particle effects, which is great for this kind of game when you're constantly having particles flying around in combat as you're slashing the enemy. If you've not tried this one since launch, maybe it's now time to dive in again. 
because it's had a ton of content updates since launch as well. More classes, weapons, and game modes, and now a graphical boost. So this one doesn't have huge graphical improvements, but it's making use of the XR2's headroom, and it's making the game more stable with a quality of life update for Phantom Covert Ops. So this one's from End Dreams, the secret agent kayaking stealth title, which I really enjoyed on the quest. You can play it sitting down and not feel like you're rushing to do anything as you glide down the river, taking out and distracting enemies. It's calming, yet thrilling. As I said, this game isn't as big of a change compared to the others on the list. However, it has been optimized for the Quest 2 hardware with its quality of life update, which contains performance improvements, new achievements, and more unlockables, and of course, bug fixes. The game will see another update on October 22nd, which is a second challenge pack. And if you enjoyed the first one, you will not want to miss out on this one. More tests to test your kayaking skills and shooting ability. This next game has photorealistic environments that I wasn't sure could get any prettier, but they have. This is Real Fishing VR. This game was already beautiful using photorealistic environments where you can go fishing with your buddies, which I know for the older boomers in us, that is fantastic news, especially in these lockdown times. So this game has had graphical improvements and resolution improvements. The photorealistic environments are now much clearer and the textures on the fish are much more defined and less blurry. There's also dynamic foveated rendering enabled for both Quest 2 and Quest 1. So you can enjoy some sort of graphical improvement on both systems. The Quest 2 specific updates are the shaders in the lodging area have been improved and there's now an option for 90 hertz once that's been officially enabled. It's just waiting for you to take advantage of. So one of the most stunning games on the Oculus Quest 1 is Red Matter and it's now had even more improvements for Quest 2 and it looks stunning. So Red Matter is a slower paced puzzle title that pulls you into the strange mysteries of the planet, set in a futuristic cold war and one of the most beautiful games on the Oculus Quest. And this was before the game got this enhancement update. So coming from Vertical Robot who are on a mission to improve the game's clarity even more so with this enhancement update. So they've added an isotropic filtering which should improve the visuals at a distance and at tight angles, increase the resolution of several textures, plus the overall resolution of the game has been increased to make it look much sharper. There's also dynamic foveated rendering, and they've also lowered the maximum fixed rendering level plus performance improvements. It's the kind of game that looks so stunning, you may even forget you're using a standalone device running on a mobile chipset. This, I was so happy to hear that this was getting an enhancement update because I love this game. It's one of the best virtual reality titles you could try on the system, a definite must play, and I'm talking about Super Hot VR. This is perhaps many of your first virtual reality games that you've played on the Oculus Quest system. This is a fantastic, unique game where you are put through several stages where you are to kill all the enemies on screen without being hit. But time only moves when you do, allowing you to analyze and pull off some badass kill sessions. This game is receiving a nice resolution boost for sharper visuals and more clarity, nearing 4K. And the ability to enjoy this game at 90 frames a second once Oculus have enabled that feature. There are also other changes that are coming to both systems, such as the removal of the manual transition to the next stage, that pyramid that you grab to keep up the pace of the game, and of course, general performance fixes. The next one is a game that I'm sure many of you will find hilarious and some of you will just find completely annoying. This is Trover Saves the Universe. This is a platformer where you were controlling someone through the eyes of somebody else. A game created by the co-creator of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, so you can expect some incredibly insane and wacky interactions throughout this game. I really did enjoy playing this one. There are not many games like this on the quest. This one's getting a resolution improvement, a reduction in the foveated rendering, and improved frame rates. So you can experience this game in a much sharper and smoother way. The next one is a VR classic, and this development company is always pushing updates, always trying to be on the forefront of what's new in the virtual reality space for this game and this is Waltz of the Wizard. As I said this game gets frequent updates all the time and is always staying current with the latest tech such as hand tracking. When that was released this game instantly got it. They had implemented that feature and it's one of the first games you can play the entire game without any controllers. It's now got a Quest 2 update from Alden Dynamics. This is a wizarding playground as you explore different worlds, complete puzzles, make your way through labyrinths, conjure spells and potions, whilst being able to interact with nearly anything around you in the world. There are a ton of secrets waiting to be found. So the graphical update for Quest 2 includes an increase of resolution for sharper visuals, real bloom, some lighting effects on spells and reflective objects, anisotropic textures are now available as well, there are more objects available in the main home HUD for you to interact with, and more decoration around the place as well. Fire particles now come off flames, and of course, there are general performance improvements too. The Quest 1 also received an update, 
that now includes more baked lighting improvements, so there's an update for both systems in the graphics department. So this next application allows you to play PC VR games wirelessly, and now you can do that in 90 hertz as well with this new update, and this is Virtual Desktop. So this application now supports 90 hertz, and I got to try it before the Quest 2 launch, which is now disabled until a future update. This new update included high resolution support and a higher bitrate support in the application to really take advantage of the high bandwidth on Wi-Fi. 6 and combining a high video bitrate with the high resolution, PC VR games will now look fantastic. There's also now a brightness slider in case your eyes are being strained on your desktop and a gamma slider. These features are also available on Quest 1. Next is a multiplayer title and if there was one that needed a graphical boost it's this one. It's Onward. An online multiplayer action shooter where going full on guns blazing is not the way to play. It's more tactical, especially in team play. This is a loved game but on the Oculus Quest it does lack that beauty. It needed an update. So in the latest update 1.8.5 on the Oculus Quest 2 you should see greater texture detail, especially on your weapons due to the new specular maps. You should also see less texture popping and loading which was previously very very prominent. There is also B haptic support on the Oculus Quest now which is incredible so you can play wirelessly a multiplayer online shooter with B haptic support on the Oculus Quest for greater immersion fantastic news one of my favorite zombie games now and one where I have huge respect for the developers is they're always pushing out updates trying to improve this title and I went from a game where at launch where I was like huh to now I'm considering a must play this is Death Horizon Reloaded. So now it's one of my favorite virtual reality games with its co-op support so you can play through it with a friend and be haptic support for deeper immersion. These devs have not stopped improving this game and as of today, there is an Oculus Quest 2 enhancement as well, which includes dynamic muzzle flashes for when you're unloading your gun into zombies, the lighting bursts out and highlights your surroundings. There's also more detailed textures on the enemies and the weapons that has some nice lighting effects on them so you can see more reflections. So now the weapons also look extra shiny and what a difference it makes. So if you like zombies and half decent visuals, be haptic support native on the quest and co-op experiences, look no further. Next is a horror game on the list, so watch out, do not look behind you, there's something there. It's Affected the Manor. A creepy game update this time around, Affected the Manor, which you may have played many, many years ago. This allows the user to just simply walk through and explore and get scared without anything overly complex for new virtual reality users. They also had an update that included a speedrun mode, which I thought was one of the most addictive and fun horror experiences I've had in VR. But now it's also got some Quest 2 updates. So Fallen Planet Studios brings us the darkness update, which includes a new game mode for both systems where you have a light source that slowly depletes every time you use it. So be warned, but on Quest 2, you will have dynamic shadows, but you can also enjoy a skin shader that has been implemented so all ethnic groups can deepen their immersion. There's also increased clarity and audio improvements as well. And finally, we're ending it on an absolute classic and one that comes with some exclusive content for the Quest 2 and that is Rec Room. Rec Room is definitely a game that could do with the extra headroom the XR2 chip provides so it can play a bit smoother. And perhaps that's why it's getting content that the Quest 1 will not. So these new game modes will not be available on Quest 1. The first of the game modes is Isle of the Lost Skulls, a co-op experience, and Rec Royale, the Rec Room Battle Royale game, which looks like a ton of fun. The Isle of the Skulls is available for you to enjoy right now on the Quest 2, but the Rec Royale is coming at a later date further on down the line. I'm not aware of any visual improvements in this game, just the additional content for the Quest 2. So that's the list, guys. That's all of the games that are best played on the Oculus Quest 2, whether that be improved visuals, improved performance, or additional content. I hope there's something there that you can go dive in and try right now. Please subscribe to the channel, join the Oculus Quest giveaway. Thanks to our patrons, you're absolute legends. Happy gaming. Good day.